What is going on, everybody? Welcome to my first ever rebuild on Madden 25. And I'll tell you what, I am excited. Kick things off. We're going to rebuild no other than my Dallas Cowboys. My favorite team. I've been a big fan my entire life. And unfortunately, it's been about 25 years of disappointment. So today, we're going to give us a nice five-year rebuild to see if I can lead the Dallas Cowboys to a Super Bowl. Their first since like the late 90s, before I was born. Now look, the Cowboys have a really good roster as is. They've definitely got some studs. You got Micah Parsons, CeeDee Lamb. Zach Martin, and then we got Dak Prescott and some other various pieces around that are really good. Look, I think our biggest issue here is going to be figuring out where we can spend our money because, look, there's only, only so many slices of the pie, as Jerry Jones says. We're going to have to figure out how to distribute that to our stars. Anyways, let's hop in. Is it going to be kind of like a learning uh, aspect for me because this is my first Madden rebuild, but let's just go with it. All right, so like we were saying earlier, the Cowboys actually have a really good roster and that's headlined by no other than Micah Parsons, the superstar himself. But they also have another guy on the offense, and that's CeeDee Lamb, who's currently holding out, waiting for a new contract. But don't worry, in this rebuild, we're going to pay this man his money. Look, another upcoming free agent we got is going to be Dak Prescott. Uh, for this rebuild, we are going to stick with him. He's our guy. I still personally think Dak Prescott can deliver a Super Bowl to the Cowboys, and we're going to make that happen in this rebuild. And look, you can't talk about the Cowboys defense without the two stud corners, Trayvon Diggs and Deron Bland. These guys are the definition of ball hawks, and we're going to look for them to carry the back end of our defense in this rebuild. And lastly, we do have a few aging vets. We've got probably one of the greatest offensive linemen of all time, for sure, first ballot Hall of Fame, Zach Martin. He's 33. He's on a one-year deal, and I don't know when he's going to retire in this, but we're going to try to make him stick around for as long as possible. And then we've got Demarcus Lawrence, also known as Tank. Stud left end, but he's getting up there. He's 32. He's already started to take team-friendly deals, and I don't know how much longer he's going to be with us. You know, I've been playing Madden my entire life, and they've never really had, like, offensive line, like, ways to progress your offensive line. And, and they finally added this pocket protector, uh, this pocket protector drill this year that you can possibly get upgrades for your offensive lineman. We're hopping in with our first-round pick, left tackle Tyler Guyton. Let's see if we can't upgrade him and make him be our cornerstone left tackle for the future. Let's go! Finally, I think I had to try that like six times, but we got the gold first try Another gold first try Okay, so I was doing the linebacker drill and there's a glitch where uh, my starting tight end Jake Ferguson is in right now It's supposed to be DeMarvin Overshone, but I'll tell you what if tight end doesn't work out Jake Ferguson will make a hell of a linebacker because I just put up hundred and forty thousand points on this drill Sorry, 150,000 points on this drill. What? All right, so something new this year is these uh, additional storylines. Much more role-playing elements. So let's hop in, check what these are all about, and then we'll be back and see what happens. So CD Lamb wants to know if we would change the fact that he likes his brand. Um, look, I want him to be a leader. He's one of the better players on the team. That's what we need. Trust me to take my advice. Let's go. He will change his personality. Let's check out what we got with the press conference here. Let's see what this is all about. Good morning. Time to kick off the season. Now that we're in the middle of camp, I've got some roster questions for you. Okay. Quick question about right guard, Zach Martin. Yep. What do you have him working on in training camp? Pass block power. I don't know. I mean, he's got to be like 99 overall on all of those. He's a 98 overall right guard. They couldn't have asked me this about one of my younger guys. Oh, nice. All of them receive it. That's big. You're going to ask about the position battle. What position battle? There's no position battle that I'm aware of. So let's find out. Maybe for receiver three. Let's see. Halfback position. There's no halfback position battle uh there is none there will not be a battle elliot's the starter let zeke eat i doubt that will go over well in the locker room i disagree all right well we have to cut 19 players this should be pretty easy seeing as we have a 32 overall and a couple 50 overalls so we'll do this and then we'll move on all right we got another one of these storylines uh on the practice sideline media interview let's see what this is all about coach we talked to the team about the team's identity what can the fans expect from your offense this season look 
We're going to trust our quarterback. An explosive passing plays. Um, average eight yards per pass attempt. Sure. All right, so we're at week one, and we're going to go ahead and set our season goal. And, season goers. and we're already a pretty good team, so we're definitely going to make the playoffs. Um, I'm going to set make the playoffs as our season goal. I think that's pretty fair. Um, you know, we'll see. Okay, so I actually didn't play a ton of Madden 24, and I never really could get into the new scouting. I don't know. I think we always complained about the old scouting, and now they added this, and it's, I don't know. To me, it's over my head and complex. But I'm going to give it a go. Um, once we get a few years in, I might just turn on auto-scout because skip ahead a few weeks and see where we're at. All right, so jumping in here, actually, at the midway point through Season 1, and we are actually undefeated, 6-0, which should not be a shocker to anybody considering, you know, Cowboys the best team in the NFL. But just taking a look at our schedule, um, you know, we've had a couple of these have been close games. I mean, here's the Steelers 24-23, 2017 the Lions. Um, I would definitely say the back half of our schedule is more challenging. So if we end up going undefeated, I would actually be pretty shocked. But maybe we're going to be in contention for a playoff team and, you know, hopefully push for a potential Super Bowl year one. All right, so like we said earlier, we got a couple big contracts coming up this offseason here, one of which is our stud CD Lamb. One of which is our franchise quarterback, Dak Prescott. And then we got a few other stranglers here that we're going to try to extend just to, you know, make this team better. All right, we went ahead and got CeeDee Lamb signed up. We went ahead and just gave him a player-friendly deal. I didn't want to risk messing this up. He's going to be a cornerstone to our team, so let's keep him here. And we also signed our quarterback to another extension, this time a four-year, $203 million deal, which I think is actually pretty fair, both for him and for the team. So we'll take that any day of the week. All right, we also went ahead and extended Marquise Bell. Look, he's an 82 overall star safety, and he's only 25 years old. So four-year, $32 million contract is pretty good for me. All right, and one last extension before we get to the offseason here is Zach Martin. This is just a one-year, $22 million extension. He's a 98 overall still, so he really hasn't regressed. It's going to just be probably the last contract before he extends um, or before he retires, excuse me. But yeah, the rest of these guys, we're probably just going to let walk. We only got about $40 million left over, and we still have some big contracts with Micah Parsons, Tyler Smith, Diggs coming back up, Trayvon, uh, Deron Bland. So these are all guys that got to get paid, and I'd rather pay them than an aging Demarcus Lawrence or even an aging Brandon Cook. All right, so we are at the playoffs, and we went... Oh, hold on. Let's get back. We went 13-4, and four, which is massive. It looks like we're the number one seed in the NFC, which is great because we're going to get that first round by, and then a home field advantage the entire playoffs. So I like this where all the stats are right here. So as you can see, Dak Prescott was actually second in passing yards with 4,339 touchdowns. But the man of the hour, Micah Parsons with 24 sacks. What a season he had. And also CeeDee Lamb with almost 1,500 yards and 10 touchdowns. Damn, we must have been freaking good this year. Hey, would you look at that? The old man Zeke even had a thousand yard season with 11 touchdowns. If he does that, the Cowboys are winning the Super Bowl. All right, second and deeper look here under the hood. Dak, 4,300 yards, 39 touchdowns, 15 picks. Would like to see a few less picks, but that's a pretty good season for me. Receiving, CeeDee Lamb balled out. We all knew that was going to happen. Almost 1,500 yards and 10 touchdowns. Brandon Cooks, just under 1,009. Colbert, just under 1,009. And then the tight end, Ferg, with about 704. All three... All four really good seasons. I right, take a look at defense. Micah balled out 24 and a half. I bet he's defensive player of the year. And the old man tank, Demarcus Lawrence, 11 and a half sacks. A great season also. Not too many picks. In fact, neither of our ball hawks even had a lot. They had one and two. But Donovan Wilson with three on the season. So that's good to see. And lastly, Damone Clark. What a season. 111 tackles. 95 of which were solo. Really good season from the second year starter. All right, so it looks like Mahomes won MVP year one where this shit's rigged. And Andy Reid run coach of the year also. Looks like we came up in third, which is BS. But we were correct in our guess. Micah Parsons was defensive player of the year. That's awesome to see his first time winning the award. And Dak won the NFC best quarterback of the year. Zach Martin, no surprise, coming in at the best offensive line of the year for the NFC. Now, I did upgrade these guys actually at the halfway point, and they had a few points. But seeing here that our starting rookie center, Cooper Beebe, has six upgrade points, and our starting rookie left tackle, Tyler Guyton, has five is very exciting. These guys might be able to progress really well. All right, so look, our first matchup in the playoffs is against the Minnesota Vikings, who are an 84 overall. And I was looking at the stats, and it looks like they actually went with J.J. McCarth, who unfortunately just suffered a knee injury, and looks like he's going to definitely miss some time. So I don't know. I guess we're in some sort of alternate universe. Anyways, let's jump ahead, see if we can win this. If we do, I'm sorry, Dad. But in real life, 
going down. Well, I was talking all that crap just for us to lose 23 to 20 to the Vikings. That's unfortunate. So the final four has got the Vikings versus the Eagles, the six and the seven seed. Wow, that's impressive. And then the Chiefs versus the Jaguars. So let's see who wins the Super Bowl this year, and then let's get to the offseason. All right, and looking at the end of season recap, it looks like the Chiefs were able to beat the Eagles in the Super Bowl. Um, so, you know, we've had that matchup before. So kudos to the Chiefs. Thank you for not letting the Eagles win another one. All right, and taking a look at retirements, unfortunately, Zach Martin actually retired. So, you know, we just handed him that extension. So I'm not really sure how that's going to mess us up cap space wise, but I'm sure it will. All right, one of the big moves here we're going to do is get, we're going to go ahead and pick up Tyler Smith, the stud left guards, um, fifth year option okay and i tried to um extend demarcus lawrence here because he's still an 89 overall just a one-year extension but he unfortunately wants to test free agency kind of played in franchise tagging him but uh, i think we're gonna let him walk all right so i went through and offered a couple con a couple contracts to some of these guys that are gonna be backups for us we're playing with injuries on so um backups will be important in case there is an injury so mainly offensive line and defensive back guys all right so jumping in here free agency we got about 60 million to spend but like I said, we got a lot of big contracts coming up on the back end, so we're probably not going to use all of it here, but I'm going to take a look, see if there's anybody that's going to make our team better, and I'll get back to you if so. Real quick interjection here. If you look down there, our team needs a right guard, center back, cornerback, sorry, I've been playing way too much FIFA, and right outside linebacker. So those are probably going to be the things we're going to be uh, looking to address either here or in the draft. All right, and this is exactly one of those opportunities that I'm talking about. Jeremiah owosu Koromoa, the Joker, is an 87 overall star, 25 years old, and he's a scheme fit for us. So we're going to go ahead and make a big contract offer to him here. Six year, 161 million, which is massive, but we're going to see if that's enough to get him. All right, so here's another one we're going to go after. Uh, Chase Young, look, superstar right end. We're going to switch him to play left end opposite side of Mike Parsons, but if we can get him, I think this would be one of the best pass rush duos in the league. All right, so I just did this evaluate offers button. I wasn't really sure what I was going to do, but it turns out we just got Jeremiah owosu koromoa and Chase Young. I think those are going to be the only two big signings. We might look and see if we need any depth pieces here, but we really only got about 10 million left, so this is probably going to be it. All right, so look, this is the first time we're checking out the brand new draft, so we're going to let it play out and see what it looks like. you'll join the greats and line up next to them on the same field in the same A little hype video. That dream required incredible sacrifice just to even make it to this point for the coaches and teams of this league they dream of the right player that changes everything for their franchise my boy Tonight, those dreams collide welcome to madden's nfl draft yeah that's pretty cool i like that cool little intro video for the draft all righty so where are we at we have picked 27. Oh, what's this? Cam Vaughn, right outside linebacker to the Cardinals, it looks like. All right, Commissioner Goodell. Nice. This guy's wearing a do rag to the NFL draft. Haven't seen that before. All right, that's pretty cool. All right, let me pause this. I don't want to see all the players walk out, if we're being honest. Okay, skip ahead. All right, we're on the board. Um, we're going to hop in, we're going to take a look at the prospects, and we'll be back with a pick here in a minute. Okay, so our our biggest need is definitely going to be right guard, but unfortunately, there's not really any good right guards available. But we have a choice of a good center and a good left tackle, and I think this is who we're going to go with. I think we're going to go with Deontay Parsons. I mean, just from these projections, he looks pretty freaking good. So we're going to go with him, and the plan will be to switch him to a right guard. All right, he was ranked 47th in true value, and we took him at 27. So that's probably not that great, and he's only normal development, which sucks. But maybe he'll go up a little bit when we put him at right guard. All right, so the cornerback's probably our next biggest need now um, for that slot guy. And I think we're going to go with Dalvin Williams here. He's actually the fastest corner, good bench press, pretty good vertical. So he looks like an athletic freak. Um, we're going to go with him, and hopefully he turns out all right. All right, so look at that. Dalvin Williams is a good pick. He's a number 13 ranked player, and we got him at 59. He's hit in development, which is sick. 94 speed, 91 excel. Yeah, this guy's going to be all right. Okay, so now we're into the third round, and, you know, we let Zeke walk. We let Rico Dowell walk, so we really need a running back. And this Tyreek Collins doesn't look bad. He's a power back, but he's going to have A ball carry vision, A trucking, A stiff arm, and he could possibly have as high as B awareness. So I think it's going to be a pretty good bet here. 221, 511. This guy's a bowling ball. Let's go with it. All right, and look, that's a B plus. He was ranked 67th, and we took him at 91, so not a bad pick. And he's hidden development, which is even better. 
Okay, so for our fourth round pick, this is a complete shot in the dark. But you know, this year they added where you can sort by, you know, their 40 time, how they rank in speed, strength, whatever. So this is the fastest wide receiver on the board. Now, one major concern down at the bottom there, it says he has F catching, which is, you know, bad, like the lowest it could be. But this guy ran a 4 3 1. So he can run. As long as we can teach him how to catch, this guy could be an animal for us. So we're going to go with Greg Bayou here and see how he turns out. All right. And look, he's number 70 out of 123. So pretty good. I'll take that. He's hidden development even better. And he's got 99 speed, 99 excel. What a stud pick. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing we just did there with Greg for speed. And we're going for D tackle but for strength. And this guy had 37 reps on the bench press. He's the strongest player in the class. We're going to pick him and see. Maybe he turns out all right as well. Ugh. All right, he did not. Cesar Wilson's 316, uh, and we picked at 155. So not that great, but he does have 90 strengths. So maybe if we can develop him, he could be not that bad. All right, and for our final pick, we went ahead and took Ernest Good, middle linebacker. If we're being honest, I just skipped this pick because I didn't have anybody scouted. So yeah, but look. Deontay Parsons, he's a 73 overall. We're going to switch him to right guard and see if his overall goes up, though. All right, and it does. At a right guard, Deontay Parsons is a 75 overall, so I think that's a pretty good first-round pick. And look, the stud, Dalvin Williams, he's a 76 overall for our second-round pick. That's pretty good to me. And Tyreek Collins, a 72. So look, I think this is actually a pretty solid class. These top three guys, really top four guys, are going to be able to come in and, and contribute and play week one, probably. All right, so look, in preseason year two, we've had quite a bit of upgrades from guys. As you can see, CeeDee Lamb and Micah Parsons, both up to 99 overalls, which is awesome. We've also seen a good bit of growth out of Diggs, Bland, and Tyler Smith, all up into the 90s. Dak's up a little bit to a 92, but you know he's 32 years old now, so we probably won't see a ton of progress from him. And a big grower from... I don't like that phrase. Look, another player who's overall jumped up hugely is Tyler Guyton up to an 82. I think he was a 75 at the start of last season, so that's awesome to see. And our other rookie line from, from lineman from last year, Cooper Beebe's up to an 81. Another huge increase. This is great to see. We All right, we're hopping into Russian attack with Tyreek Collins, our brand new rookie running back. Let's see if we can get gold, maybe get him an upgrade or, you know, at least a skill point here. This should be pretty easy. Let's go! Ho -ho! All right, well, look, if this season, if Tyreek Collins is anything like he was in this drill, this guy's going to be an animal. We put up 120,000 points, easy gold medal, and he feels really nice. All right, so we just wrapped up all of our preseason uh, training camp stuff. So we got a couple upgrades for some guys. Let's advance forward, see if we need to cut anybody, and then let's get to the regular season. All right, we're at the start of the regular season, and we're going to stay conservative with it again this year, choosing to make the playoffs. Um, look, I think we can contend for the Super Bowl, but we're not going to make that our goal because we're not trying to get fired. All right, so before we advance from week one, I wanted to go in and look at our, our salary cap and, and where it's all allocated, right? And we got the big guys, but one of our worst contracts here is uh, on Terrence Steele. Look, he's still got almost $87 million remaining over four years, and it only increases. He's at 17 this year, 17 next, and then it goes up to 20. But He's only a $12 million cap penalty right now. We're not going to do it yet, but we might look to cut him this offseason. But we got to make sure we have a foreseeable upgrade for him there. He's a 77. It's serviceable, but that's way too much money to be paying to a 77 overall. All right, look at the halfway mark. We are four and two, so not quite as good last year, but I think the competition might be a little bit better this year. I'm um, looking at stats. CeeDee Lamb actually leads in receptions and yards, so obviously he's killing it. And I'd imagine that means Dak's probably having a pretty good season as well. All right, we knew this day was coming, and that's the day that we got to pay Micah Parsons, the 99 overall. This is going to be a big contract, but we got to get him locked up. All right, and we did just that. Five-year, $156 million deal. Massive, but he deserves every single dollar of it, and he's here for the next five years at least. All right, and our other superstar corner, Deron Bland, 90 overall, we got him locked up for four years, $58 million until he's 30. Um, so let me go through my mindset here. He's a 90 overall and a corner. I didn't really want to franchise tag him because I believe the franchise tag goes off of like the average of like the top five or 10 salaries. So it would be much higher. I don't think I'm going to be able to extend Jake Ferguson. So the plan as of now is going to be to franchise tag him this offseason when we have a little bit more cap space um, because the tight end pay should in theory be lower than the cornerback pay in my mind but yeah we really don't have enough money right now to find ferguson or damone clark who are two solid starters for us right now and there's quite a few backups that are also going to be without contract this offseason so it's it's starting to get challenging with balancing all these big contracts 
Okay, so we're actually going to go ahead and we're going to restructure a couple contracts here, like CeeDee Lamb, probably Dak, probably Diggs. Some of these guys that we know are going to be around for the long haul um, to free up space to lock up at least Jake Ferguson, possibly Damone Clark as well. We don't want those guys to hit the other market. Okay, so for some reason, I just did all that restructuring, and now it says we have less cap space than we did before. So I'm not really sure what the deal is with that because um, I was thinking, metaphorically, we were just going to be kicking the can down the road um you know kind of going all in now but apparently that's not what i did might have screwed ourselves but let's see let's send to the end of the season and see how we're looking and we'll see y'all then all right well look the cowboys went on an insane run on the back half of the season and we finished 13 and 4 and for two seasons in a row we're the number one seed in the nfc and i just had to make sure that i didn't just load into last season because for a second year in a row Dak prescott second in passing yards micah parsons led the league in sacks and CD Lamb led the leagues in receiving yards. And taping, taking a deeper look, Dak 4,100 yards, 35 touchdowns, 10 picks. To me, I would say that's probably better than what he did last year. Tyree Collins almost eclipsed the thousand yard mark, but he had 10 rushing touchdowns. And I think for a uh, for a rookie season, this is pretty good. CD Lamb balled out again, 1571 and 13 touchdowns, but this year on 110 receptions. Jalen Tolbert came in with 807. And I'm trying to see where Greg Bayer is, our rookie, but he only had 196 yards. So obviously he didn't get to play as much as we would have liked. But on the defensive front, Micah Parsons, 23 sacks, 17 tackles for loss. This is probably good enough to be defensive player of the year again. And look, J Chase Young only had eight sacks, but he had 20 tackles for loss. So what an amazing season for both of our edge rushers. And Diggs was back where he normally is at the top of the interception list with four, which is still actually low for his career average but we'll take it. And Damone Clark, back-to-back 100-plus -back tackle seasons, 103 on the season. I'm very happy with that. All right, looking at the yearly awards, uh, Jordan Love actually won MVP this season. Um, Dak came in fifth, shockingly. And Patrick Bailey, the head coach of the Texans, wins coach of the year. We came in fifth somehow, which I don't understand how this works. But taking a look at NFC Offensive Player of the Year, the main man himself, CeeDee Lamb, wins it for the first time. And back-to-back, -back, repeat Defensive Player of the Year, Micah Parsons. He deserves it more than anybody else, and that's awesome to see. And our rookie, Tyree Collins, wins Offensive Rookie of the Year. So a trio of award winners, which is great to see. But now look, all of these stats really don't mean anything if we can't win the playoffs. Historically, the Cowboys have had really good stats. We've had award winners, but we can't put it on the field in the playoffs. So let's sim ahead. And let's see if we can finally get to the Super Bowl this year. Before we advance, Deontay Parsons. Now, if y'all remember, he was our first round pick this year. He was a left tackle. We switched him to right guard. He has seven upgrade points. Seven. And I think he had two at the midway point also. A huge season for him. This guy is progressing like crazy, which is great to see. All right, so we're into the divisional round here. And we're going to face the Detroit Lions at home. They went 10-7. and seven. They're an 86 overall. So on paper, we're technically better. But... Let's sim ahead and let's see if we can't win this game. And we could not. In a heartbreak, we lost 41 to 37 to the Lions as we have an NFC North matchup in the NFC Championship game with the Packers versus the Lions. And then we got the Texans versus the Chiefs. Let's sim ahead. Let's see who wins the Super Bowl this year. And then we'll skip on over to free agency. Wow. And it looks like the Green Bay Packers were the 2025 Super Bowl champs, winning 31 to 28 against the Chiefs. Um, you know, I think that's actually a pretty realistic outcome if the Cowboys don't make it, but. I think that'd be a pretty exciting game. You know, now as we wrap up the second season, you know, it's kind of just more of the same. The Cowboys have had great regular season success, and then we just get bounced in the playoffs. So we're going to have to do something to take that next step so where we can start winning in the playoffs next season. All right, and once we got to the re-sign period, we actually had about $16 million in cap space available. We're going to go ahead and extend Jake Ferguson, our tight end, to a, a three-year deal, I think around like $25, $30 million. I think that's pretty fair for him. All right, we're also going to pick up Mozzie Smith, our D-tackle's, fifth year option he's, he's only 25 years old he's a 76 overall star um we'll pick it up just because we really don't have a lot of options at d tackle right now so we got to make sure we keep him all right and our last extension of the off season here is going to be brandon aubrey kicker he's up to an 84 overall this guy's been a stud since he's made his debut in the nfl um last year in real life three years ago in game he's been a beast all right so going into year two free agency we actually only have 300k in cap space we actually don't have enough money to sign anybody um, and this is where those bad contracts like Terrence Steele are starting to tear us up. Um, I'm going to take a look, see if there's anything I can do. And really, if there's even any players that I'm interested in going after. And then we'll be back with an update.
All right, so taking a look at Terrence Steele's contract, we would still incur about an $8.25 million penalty to cut him while only saving $8 million. So it really doesn't make a lot of sense, especially since if we cut him, that opens up a very big hole that we have to draft for. I'd rather go into the draft being able to draft for, you know, want rather than need. But we're going to keep it that way. All right, so going into the draft, I decided to take a look at this mock draft here. And they have us picking 28 and taking right end John McCain. Um not the former senator from the state of Arizona, but rather the right end from Texas Tech. So maybe that's who we take. But based off of our team needs, we actually do need to draft for need, and that's we need a left end. Excuse me, we need a left outside linebacker. We don't even have one on the roster. We also need a D tackle and a middle linebacker. So let's hop in. Let's see what's available at pick 28, and then we'll make our decision then. Okay, so we're here on draft night, and I decided we're going to bite the bullet now, and we're going to trade Terrence Steele, and I'll explain why. First off, the Falcons are offering us a really good deal here. Two draft picks, plus a left outside linebacker who fills a position of need for us. Now, I don't think Zach Harrison's really that great, but right now, we just need a body. Usually, our left outside linebacker is not even going to be on the field because we play so much nickel defense. But second off, I was taking a look at the draft board, and there is currently 10 first-round worthy offensive linemen in this draft. So I would feel a lot more comfortable getting rid of Terrence Steele, freeing up that contract, and then drafting a rookie uh, a rookie offensive lineman and switching him over to the right tackle position. I think that's going to be our best bet. And I lied. After looking at that Falcons outside linebacker, he's definitely more of a pass rusher type. So we're going to go with the Raiders for Micah McFadden here, middle linebacker. We can always switch him to a left outside if need be. I think it gives us more flexibility. Okay, so of those 10 offensive linemen that were there, nine of them have already been drafted and the only one that's left is a center and i don't think he's going to translate best to a right tackle but it looks like our scouts really focused on quarterback and receiver this offseason and obviously i want Dak to be our guy for the foreseeable future but these two guys shane spitzer and bo farrell both look way too good to pass up on a awareness so i think they're already gonna be pretty high overall but they also have insane passing stats now i went and i compared the both of them and i think we're gonna go with bo farrell the strong arm quarterback. They both look good. All right, I lied. We're actually going to go with Shane Spitzer. After looking at it, they're both pretty even, but I think this guy, Shane Spitzer, is a little bit more athletic. He's a little bit better at all the stats across the board. So Shane Spitzer, we're going to take him with our first round pick here. Okay, so this didn't happen last year. So I guess Spitzer might be in attendance. Let's see, is he going to walk out and, and take a picture with the commissioner? He is. Could this be our quarterback of the future? Maybe. Could it be trade bait? Also, maybe. We'll figure that out later. All right, nice. He's the number 10 ranked player in the draft, and we took him at 28, so that's pretty good value. He's got hidden dev, which is great. 94 throw power. Yeah, this guy looks like he's going to be good. All right, and now that we're into the second round, um, we're going to reach We're gonna reach a little bit. James Fenderson, we are 100% drafting for need here because we need somebody in that right tackle spot, and this is the highest rated right tackle left. So we're going to go with James Fenderson and cross our fingers and hope this guy is good. Ugh. And I think we just drafted a bust. Number 278, and we took him at 60. Normal development. This was probably a bad pick. All right, so in the fourth round, um, this guy was ranked 323, and we took him at 124. But he's hidden development, left outside linebacker. So I don't think it's all that bad. We're kind of having a draft for need because... We gave some bad contracts and we don't have any cap space to fill those needs in free agency. So Greg Griffin, hidden development, left outside linebacker. Hopefully this guy turns out all right. All right, so look, this wasn't the greatest draft, um, but a big takeaway here was Shane Spitzer, 75 overall quarterback. Now I am interested. I'm going to go check and see what Bo Farrell, I think his name was, to see what his overall is and see how they compare. So Bo Farrell actually made it to the second round and he's a 75 overall as well. So we maybe made the right choice. I don't know. All right, so we took James Fenderson in the second round, and he's only at 64 overall, which is not great. We went ahead and took another right tackle later in the draft in the fifth round, and he's actually a higher overall at six uh, at a 65. So both suck and might not start this season. The rest were all super low overall. Uh, we got a couple hidden devs, but so far nothing really to be impressed with. Uh, my drafting was not that great this year. All right, so look, at the start of Season 3, our roster's still looking good. We still got Lamb and Parsons at 99 overalls, and they're both only 27, so that's great. Diggs stayed flat at 92. 
Tyler Smith is up to a 92, and Dak has actually started to regress a little bit. He was a 91 last year, down to a 90 overall now. Uh, some others to point out, Tyler Guyton, he's up to an 85 overall, which is great to see. Hopefully, he will continue to progress. Uh, Deontay Parsons from one year ago is up to an 85, which is awesome. Now, look, I'm pretty sure we're going to have to make some tough decisions at the end of this season. We're going to let Dak have the year, but if he can't win us a Super Bowl this year, we might have to look to move on. Jane Spitzer is chomping at the bits to get out there, so let's see what happens this year before we make any rash decisions. I will say I'm a little concerned about the right tackle position, and more specifically, kind of just our depth across our team. Um, we're one injury away from being a top 10 pick potentially, so hopefully, fingers crossed, everybody stays healthy, and we do good in the sim, we get the number one seed, we win the Super Bowl this year, and we ride off into the sunset. Let's see if that can happen. All right, we'll look at the halfway mark. We're sitting at four and two. We're currently paced in to be the number three seed, but we usually do pretty good on the back half of the season. So let's check some negotiations here, see if we got anybody we need to extend, and then we'll address that. Okay, so we really only have one big contract that we have to extend, and that's Tyler Smith. And when I say big, this is massive. This is just as big as CD and Micah's contract, but we only have 1.5 million in cap room right now, so we can't even make that happen. So I'm going to take a look at the finances See if we can shift some stuff around because we have to extend Tyler Smith. All right, so I went ahead and restructured pretty much everybody's contract except for Dak. Um, the reasoning being, we don't know what's going to happen after this year. He's currently got a $94 million cap hit if we were to cut him or penalty. So that's not going to be an option. But let me advance a week, see if it changes the contract values to where we can extend Tyler Smith. Okay, and somehow we now have negative cap space. The kind of same glitch. I'm assuming we'll be able to offer him a contract this offseason. Worst case, we'll franchise tag him because we're not letting him get out the building. Okay, so look, as we make it to the playoffs, we come in at 10-7, and 7, which is actually our worst season so far since we've started this rebuild, and we're the number four seed. Um, Dak's not top three in passing. Mike is second in sacks, and C's second in yards. So let's go take a deeper look at the stats and see. All right, so Dak threw for 3,800, 31 touchdowns, six interceptions. This is arguably his best season since we started this. A few less touchdowns, but way less turnovers. So, I mean, I'll take that. And Tyree Collins in his second year goes over 1,000 yards with 13 rushing touchdowns. So, really good season from him. And look, CD, he's a baller. 1,300 yards, 9 touchdowns, and that's a bad season for him. So, if that's a bad season, we'll take that all day long. Bayer, our draft pick from last year, actually 100, 800 yards and 4 touchdowns. And Jalen Brooks, 760 and 8. So, you know, really, it's CD Lamb and then a shelf down and everybody else. Looking at sacks, Mike only had 17 and a half only had 17 and a half this year but he had 18 tackles for loss which is great chase young only six and a half with 14 tackles for loss though and digs with four picks again on the season and hey look at that dalvin williams our draft pick from last year was three picks on the season so not too bad and wow demarvin overshot with a stellar season 117 tackles 90 of which are solo great season for him i'm assuming he started at middle linebacker for us this year i'm really happy with that all right so taking a look Patrick Mahomes won another MVP this year. That's his second of the rebuild. Um, that came in fifth again. It seems like he's just close enough, but not there. All right, looking at uh, Defensive Player of the Year, Michael Parsons actually three peats. He wins his third Defensive Player of the Year in a row. Now, Dak did win Best Quarterback in the NFC Award, which is cool. All right, so we didn't really have any major gainers for um, upgrade points, but... We are facing a divisional rival, the Philadelphia Eagles, here in the first round of the playoffs, wild card in Dallas. Look, we didn't have many award winners this year, so maybe this is the year we finally have team success rather than individual success. All right, and our first playoff game win of the series so far, we won 31-14 to against the Eagles, but now we are on the road at San Francisco. This is going to be a tough game, but let's see if we can't get a win somehow and move on to the NFC Championship game. Wow, and we got humbled. The 49ers beat us 38-10. to It really wasn't even close. Um, look, that's another year, another disappointment in the playoffs where we could not even reach the NFC Championship game. All right, wow. And the winner of the 2026 Super Bowl is actually the Colts. They defeated the 49ers 21-14. to um, I'm wondering if Anthony Richardson's still their quarterback, but it looks like Jonathan Taylor was Super Bowl MVP, so he's still there. All right, so look, we do not have enough cap room to sign Tyler Smith to an extension, actually. Um, we can only lowball him, but what we can do is we're going to franchise tag him. We're not going to let this guy hit the open market, so we're going to franchise tag him. Hopefully, we have more cap space next year and we can extend him. And on top of that, we're also going to pick up Tyler Guyton, our left tackle's fifth-year option, but that's going to be two big contracts that are coming up next year. Our middle linebacker position is currently an F. 
So that's a huge need right here, as well as right tackle still. We tried to address it last year, but we didn't, and free safety. Um, so we're going to take a look at the draft board. We're also going to take a look and see if there's any possible trades we can make. Um, you know, we took the quarterback last year. Maybe we can trade him. Maybe we can trade Dak. We'll take a look. Once we have an update, I'll be right back. Okay, so we are into round one. There was really no trades I could make just because we have so little cap space. Uh, actually, we have negative cap space. And any trade would cause such a penalty that I can't make one. So I'm sitting here looking at the right tackle position, right? And I'm pretty sure we're going to go with Roderick Harris. Um, we got about 60% scouted, but A, pass block, flower, uh, B, run block, A, lead block. So he looks fairly decent, may I say. There's not really a middle linebacker, so I think this guy's going to be the pick. Yep, and so Roderick Harris is the pick, and he was ranked 30th. We took him at 27, so I think that's pretty fair. And he is hit in development, which is huge. So I imagine Roger Harris plugs right in and is our starting right tackle this season. Okay, and so here we're going to kind of reach for a little bit. We need a middle linebacker badly. We don't have one on the roster, but Isaiah Simpson actually looks pretty good. Look, he's got B awareness, but he's got B play rec, B tackle, B hit power, A to C block shed, B finesse moves. So he looks pretty good with what we got to work with. So we're going to take Isaiah Simpson and let's hope he's good. All right, nice. He was ranked 66 and we took him at 59. So once again, I think that's a pretty solid pick. And he's hidden development as well. So another good pick. Okay, so when I was looking at linebackers earlier, I found Joey Contreras. But it was a little early to take him around too. But this guy looks like an animal also. B awareness, A play rec, B tackle, B power, B block shed. He looks really good on paper. And we only have one middle linebacker, the guy we just took. So let's take Joey. It's a top fit for us. Let's take him and hope he's pretty good. All right, nice. So this is our first steal. Joey was ranked 65th in the class and we took him at 91. He's normal development, but he looks pretty decent, so he'll be a good rotational player. All right, so drafting based off speed for receiver worked for us earlier with Greg uh, in year one. So we're going to try it again here with Mitch Ryans. He's got the fastest 40. We do need receiver, but it's not a huge need, so we're going to try to get a guy here. Hopefully he's fast, and hopefully he can play right away. All right, so a bit of a reach here. Mitch was ranked 153. We took him at 123. Normal development, he's only 92 speed, which is pretty crazy that the last time we did this, he had 99 speed. So that's quite a difference. All right, so taking a look at our draft re recap, uh, Roger Harris, the right tackle we took, he's a 74 overall. That should be good enough to plug in and start. Isaiah Simpson and Joey Contreras are both 72s. And once again, they're going to be a good rotation at the middle linebacker position. Unfortunately, the other three guys I took really weren't that great. I was kind of just drafting for some positional depth where we need it. And then I had to go with a punter. And Michael Beard actually had a 71. Pretty good pick for the seventh round pick. All right, so going into season four, our roster still looks good. D.D. Lamb, Micah Parsons, still 99 overalls. Tyler Smith's up to a 93. Dak is actually up to a 92 with, like, morale or whatever, but I think he's actually, like, an 87. But he is plummeting, so I wanted to move on from him, but he's got a $62.9 million penalty, so that just doesn't look like it's going to happen. Some of our other studs in Chase Young and Joker that we brought in year one free agency are up to 90 overalls, so they're looking really good. Tyreek Collins is at an 88, and Deontay Parsons at an 87. So all these guys that we drafted are looking great. Also, Shane Spitzer, the quarterback we took last year, he's up to an 84 overall. He's, uh, I think he's star development, but he looks good. And when Dak's done, it looks like Shane might be the guy to take over. All right, so at the halfway point, we're looking good. We're five and two. We're currently the number one seed in the NFC. Um, looks like we got the number one passing offense and the number two points offense. That's great. Looking at stats. Dak leads the league in yards and touchdowns with 23. Micah's leading in sacks. CD in receiving yards. And actually, Deron Bland in what looks like interceptions. So it looks like we're popping off at all facets of the game, which is great to see. Um, now we're going to hop in, see if we have any money to even negotiate with these guys. Hopefully be able to extend who we need to extend. All right, so we're sitting at a nice negative 1.6 million in cap space. And uh, we need to extend Tyler Smith and Cooper Beebe. Um, Marshawn Neeland, I would like to. Mozzie, I'd like to. Um, so it's not looking great. I'm going to go take a look at our team's uh, finances, see if I can restructure again, kick that can down the road more to be able to extend these guys. Okay, so I just restructured a couple more guys, and this is about to come bite us in the ass. Looking at these cap hits for the 2028 season, CD Lamb, who's a wide receiver, by the way, has a $52 million cap hit. What? Also have Micah at 36, Joker at 34, Chase Young at 27, 
These are just insane. Okay, so um, renegotiating those contracts didn't do anything for us. We're still at negative. Um, I might look to trade Nealon, Mozzie, some of these guys that are expiring for younger players on better contracts. Um, I'm going to play around a little bit, and I'll come back with what we got. All right, so we're going to go ahead and dump Mozzie's contract. He's got a $16 million cap hit. Trading him for Tatum Bethune. This is just simply a cap dump here. All right, nice. Look, I was going to uh, dump Marquise Bell here because he's on about a $9 million a year contract for two more years. I was able to pick up a nice, much younger D-tackle um, who's on a little bit of a longer term. I think he's still on a rookie deal, so this is a good pickup, especially with us ditching Mozzie. And those are probably the only two trades we're going to be able to make before advancing. I'm going to double check on if I can negotiate contracts, and if I can't, we're going to sim to the end of the season and see how we look. Okay, so bear with me here now. I've got a little bit of... This is going to make sense, okay? We're trading Cooper BB for Jackson Power Johnson. We had to throw in a seventh-round pick. Jackson Power Johnson's currently under contract for another three years, so we're not going to lose him this offseason. All right, so here's another similar situation. Marshawn Neeland, we weren't going to be able to re-sign him. We're trading him for Hicks here, who's still got three years left. That way, we're not losing control. We're going to franchise tag Tyler Smith for the second time, but try to keep these other positions filled up. All right, so look, what we're doing is... 100% kicking the can down the road to the extreme. We are trading for bigger contracts for worse players just to have longer control until Dak retires and we get that contract off of the books. So let's sim to the end of the season. Let's see how we do, or let's see how we finish the season. All right, another year, another season of going 13 and four. What a fantastic year. And it looks like we're the number one seed once again. So look, CeeDee Lamb had a fantastic season, probably the best ever so far for him. 17, 35 yards, 20 touchdowns. Micah with 22 sacks, 20 tackles for loss. Let's hop in and get a little bit of a closer look. Dak, 4,400 yards, 42 touchdowns, six picks. This might actually be the best season of Dak's career. Collins, another 1,100 yard, 13 touchdown game. We'll take that. I don't like how I did not have another running back with a carry. That's strange. Yeah, CD 17 and 22 is insane. Bayer, 919 and 8. Yeah, great season. Man, what another season from Micah Parsons. 22 and a half sacks, 20 tackles for loss. If I had to put my money on it, I would bet that he wins his fourth defensive player in the defensive player of the year in a row. Chase Young with only six and a half sacks. Um, we might look to move on from him when he can. He's good, but the production really isn't there, and he's getting paid a lot. And Jeremiah owosu Koromoa with 115 tackles. Great season for him. He has proven to be a really good signing for us. All right, and taking a look. Dak Prescott finally wins the MVP in the year 2027. CeeDee Lamb, another Offensive Player of the Year to add to the trophy shelf. And what do you know? Micah Parsons with the four-peat. I think if this were to somehow happen in real life, Micah Parsons would be going down as probably the greatest defensive player ever. And kind of just to top things off, Deron Bland with best defensive back for the NFC. So we got recognition at all three levels. Well, I don't know if that's technically all three levels, but whatever. All right, so look, going into the divisional round, we're at home facing the four seed New Orleans Saints. I think we can win this. I mean, let's look. I mean, look, we're an 89 overall. They're an 84. We are significantly better on paper. Let's see what happens. And somehow we just continue to lose 20 to 14. Another heartbreak. Another season of great regular season success, great individual success, and just nothing to show for in the playoffs. All right, and the winner of the 2027 Super Bowl is the Jacksonville Jaguars. I wonder if uh, Trevor Lawrence is still there, but they defeated the Los Angeles Rams. Um, that's kind of two out there teams, so interesting to see. Okay, we were able to renegotiate a bunch of contracts again and finally get Tyler Smith signed up. I accidentally skipped over it, but wow, that was stressful. And of course, we're going to pick up Deontay Parsons, fifth-year option here. Get him for one more year on the cheap. We're also going to pick up Matt James, fifth-year option. This is one of the guys we just traded for this offseason. And we're okay letting pretty much everybody else walk. Okay, so Dak's down to an 85 and currently has a $60 million cap hit. I'm doing the find a trade offer. I don't know if this is actually going to work, but I'm going to try to take this trade from Brown here for Shyeen Parker. He's an 86 overall receiver, plus a second and a sixth round pick. It looks pretty good to me. Okay, wow. And it actually went through. So we're going to have a new quarterback this season. And it's going to be Shane Spitzer, more than likely. In his third year in the pros, he's finally going to get to see the field. All right, but look, so with the trade of Dak, we actually have about just under $30 million in cap space for this season now. So we're going to try to address some of these needs because this next season is the last one. There's none more after that, so we have to go all out. Of course, the positions we need, there's not really that many studs, but Tyke Smith, strong safety. He's a scheme fit. 
We're going to go for him. He's going to fill a hole. All right, on top of that, we're going to go for Caden Stearns, former Texas Longhorn. Hook him. But he's a scheme fit. He's only a 75 overall, but he's more of a depth piece kind of, uh, you know, rotational. So we're going to give him an offer, and hopefully he'll come in and play for us. All right, we traded for a D-tackle last offseason, but we really still don't have a lot of depth. I'm going to go for Jordan Davis here, um, try to just build up that interior defensive line. All right, cool. And so we just got all three of those signings, so really shoring up the defensive side of the ball. In fact, I think our roster is really strong, so we can go into the draft picking for one. All right, so going into the draft, it actually says quarterback's our biggest need, which I disagree with, but also free safety, which we just signed one and left outside linebacker. So I'm going to take a look at the roster and see what we actually need. Yeah, so Shane Spitzer is an 80 overall, but I think it's saying we need quarterback because we only have one on the roster. So look, if there's a guy that looks insane, maybe we'll go for it, but odds are we're sticking with what we got. So if there's a good tight end, we could go for one of them because currently Jake Ferguson's the only tight end on the roster. So maybe we'll look to target tight end a little bit later in the draft. We could also afford going for a backup right end. Currently it's Micah. And while I wouldn't mind having Micah on the field for every single play, we probably do need a backup there. And we also need a kicker. I just saw that because I forgot we lost Brandon Aubrey. So we'll make sure to draft one of those guys late. Okay, so it was currently our second to second highest need, which was free safety. And this guy, CJ Sellers looks pretty good. Um, I think we're going to take him. Okay, so there's quite a few options here. I'm kind of torn between Ralph Black, who is a vertical threat tight end. He looks pretty insane. And one of these safeties. Safety is, I don't know, I don't think it's a bigger need. We only have one tight end on the roster. But I think I'm going to go with Ralph Black. He looks insane. Let's hope he is. All right, and Ralph was the 20th ranked player. We took him at 28, so that's pretty good value. And he's hit in development. 89 speed, 90 excel for a tight end is insane. He's definitely going to go out on the field. Now, that face does not look like it has 89 speed. I don't know what that is. Oh, this is sick. Okay. So, look, I was contemplating taking either Ty Lacey or CJ Sellers in the first round. So, I'm going to take one of them here. Let me check out their stats, dig a little deeper, and see who I'm going to pick. All right. So, I think CJ Sellers probably looks the best, the best of the two. So, we're going to roll with him. I'm not convinced he's that great, but this is just a, a pick for, you know, positional depth. Wow. And CJ Seller is actually the number 12th ranked player in the class, and we took him at 60. So what a steal. He's hidden development. This guy actually looks like he's a stud. All right, so going into the third round, we really needed that backup right end. I'm probably going to take Shaquille Leverett here. He's the highest rated right end left on the board. So we're just going to take a shot in the dark and hope he's pretty good. All right, so Shaquille Leverett was number 263, and we took him at 92. I really was second guessing it once I saw his stats because he had F block shed and F finesse move. So I think this guy sucks, but that's a good thing we got Michael Parsons in front of him. All right, right here, we're going with another tight end. We only have two. We'll take a third. Jarvis Cannon blocking tight end. He'll fit in certain situations. We're going with him. All right, Jarvis Cannon, also not good. 302, we took him at 124, but he's hidden development and he's a blocking tight end. So all we need is him to be an extension of the offensive line. All right, and right here in the final pick, I think we're just going to go for depth at cornerback, just a position where we need people. All right, so taking a look at our draft class, it's actually pretty good. Ralph Black, 75 overall tight end. DJ Sellers, a 76. And then the rest don't really matter because they're all depth pieces. But overall, I'm pretty happy with our top two picks here. All right, so we need a kicker. Instead of drafting one, I was like, let's just go to free agency. And Harrison Butker, is, he's 33 years old. He's an 85 overall kicker. So we're going to pick him up. He'll be our guy for this year. All right, so going into the final season, week one, we're currently sitting at a 91 overall team, which is the highest we've been yet. Look, Micah Parsons, C.D. Lamb, both still 99 overalls and looking great. We've got quite a few other low 90s. Tyreek Collins, the most notable who we drafted. But other guys like Deontay Parsons are coming in at an 88. Diane Parker, who we traded for, is at an 87. Roger Harris, the right tackle, we took up to an 84. And Shane Spitzer, our quarterback for this year, is at an 83. So... Is he going to be good enough to get us to the Super Bowl? Well, we're going to stem to the halfway point. We're going to see how we look. And hopefully, we're undefeated. All right, so go figure. We stem to the halfway point. We're 3-3. Three and three. Um, Hopefully, we can turn it around and play much better in the second half. Okay, and I'm glad this is the final year because we have like five, six, seven big contracts we have to give out. And we're currently sitting at negative $9 million in cap room. I'm not really sure how that's possible, but that's the case. All right, wow, what a comeback by the Cowboys in the second half of the season to only lose two games and finish 12-5, and five, and as a two-seed, that's huge. Now, looking at the stat overview, this is actually probably the worst season we've had. Nobody on the sacks, nobody on receiving, nobody on passing, so I'm interested to see how we actually look. Okay, Shane Spitzer with 3,826-8, not a bad season at all.
And Tyree Collins balled out almost 1,200 yards and 13 touchdowns. This guy's been about as consistent as you could hope for. All right, it's not like City had a bad season, but 1,110. Obviously, we probably didn't throw the ball as much with the first-year starter at quarterback. But a pretty good spread here also. 73 catches, 72, 68. Definitely was spreading the ball around a lot more. Okay, and it's not like Micah had a bad season. He still had 16 and a half sacks and 22 tackles for loss. He just wasn't one of the top guys, but that's still a fantastic season. And Joker with another 100-plus tackle season, 112. What a great season by him. And Jordan Davis, the D-tackle we just signed, also with 14 tackles for loss. Great pickup there. Now, I didn't expect to have any, but it looks like Mahomes won MVP again. Um, I didn't expect to be up there, though, personally. And once again, no love for me, no coach of the year. We've had some of the best rosters, some of the best records, but no coach of the year. I need some respect. And wow, for the fifth time in a row, Micah Parsons with Defensive Player of the Year. I think it's safe to say the greatest defensive player of all time, if that's the case. And Deontay Parsons also, our right guard, got some love as the best offensive lineman. That's pretty cool to see. So I just wanted to go and look and see on the legacy leaderboards where Micah Parsons is at, and he is at number one. He's above Von Miller and Miles Garrett. Um, the only thing he doesn't have is no Super Bowls or championships. He's got 17 yearly awards. All right, so this is our final season. So because of that, we're going to hop into these games. We're going to try to mostly sim, but if we need to hop in and win the game, we need to because we got to get to the Super Bowl and win. All right, so in sim, we're tied up 7-7 seven, seven here. Let's see. We're going to hop in with a minute and a half left till half. Try to go take the lead before halftime. All right. Yep, that freaking glare from the sun. Can hardly see anything. Let's see if Spitzer can do something here for us. He's going to roll out. He's going to scramble, but the defensive end catches him. Who was that? That guy was fast. All right, we got plenty of time left here. We just need to get points before halftime. He's dropping back to throw. Okay, CD Lamb bounces off the back of his head on the comeback route. That's not great. I'm starting to realize that comeback routes don't work as good as they do in college football 25. Nice, Jake Ferguson on the out route. It's nice to see him still balling out. All right, first and 10. Looking for CD here. Nope, we get a sack. That was kind of my bad. I was looking downfield. Didn't see anything. All right, we've got a minute left. We're looking for CD here on this crosser route. Again, bringing the heat the, the lamb in stride dives for the pylon out at the one almost cd all right Tyreek collins let's see if he's got the speed to get this edge here the x factor is that an x factor no that's just a superstar he's got the speed touchdown Tyreek collins all right the falcons went down and scored right before half to tie it up we're gonna keep skipping here see if the computer can do something for us and it does. They drive down and score 21-14, and then Falcons answer back. Four and a half minutes left. Can we... All right, two minutes left. They're up three. We need a touchdown to win this thing. One final drive. Let's do this. Pass play on first and ten. Dig Ferguson on the dig route. All right, nice. That's going to take us down to the two-minute warning. We're going to choose some of this clock. All right, here we go. Coming out the two-minute warning. We do not want to give them enough time to score after this. From midfield now. Tyreek Collins on the screen. Okay. Now he gets pushed out of bounds for a six-yard gain. All right, plenty of time here. We're on their side of the 50. All right, nice. Spitzer steps up and slides. Oh my God, it's like a tongue twister. All right, two clocks coming on. We're almost down to the minute mark. Let's look for Ferguson. Nope. There we go. Who's this? Oh, what's the flag? Is that going to be on us? Foul. Face mask. 15 more yards. Get us even closer. On the 10. Okay, a minute 10 left. We're going to run it here. Beautiful. Beautiful. Tyreek Collins, cut back. I don't want to score here. That's good. Okay, one more run here. Okay, they called a timeout. No, I called a timeout. Oh, there was an injury timeout. That's dumb. Backup running back. Puts his shoulder down. Down to the one. Two clocks on. All right, 30 seconds left. We're going to let this run. We're going to snap it with two seconds left. Walk in untouched. Let's go. Cowboys are up. Come on, Sim. Do not let me down.
And they didn't. The Cowboys advance 28-24 out of the wild card round. All right, in the divisional round, we're going to be at home again facing the Carolina Panthers. We're at 93 overall, by the way. They're in 85. We should be the favorite. Let's hop in and make sure we get through this one. All right, so it looks like Bryce Young is still their quarterback. We go down and get six, but I guess we missed the extra point. Okay, nice. We take a 13-0 lead, and then we punt, then they punt. Halftime, we're up 15 to nothing. Well, maybe more. 22 to nothing at halftime. That's great. All right, coming out of halftime, the sim is kicking ass right now. 29 to nothing. 29 to 7. All right, we're into the fourth. 29 to 13. Four and a half minutes left. We're up 36-13. I think we're going to have this one in the bag, but I don't know. All right, they scored 28 to make it 36-28. We're up by eight. 15 seconds left. We can skip it, and we advance. Don't even have to jump in and play. The Cowboys win the divisional round to advance to the conference championship for the first time since, what, like 2016? 12 plus years in game? Dude, that would be brutal if it takes us till 2028 to get back to the NFC championship game. All right, in the conference championship game, we're facing the Seahawks, and somehow we are at home again. 93 overall Cowboys, 87 Seahawks. Let's jump right in. All right, we're going to let the Sim do its thing again, and hopefully it can win for us. Seahawks take a 7-0 lead. Offense is not able to answer. Let's see again if they can answer. Offense drives down and answers. But Seattle comes right back, 14-7. Minute left till half, and we tied up, 14-14. Coming out of halftime. Let's see. We punt. They go down and get a field goal. All right, come on, Dallas. Nope. All right, Seahawks take a 24-14 lead. 31-14 lead. Ladies and gentlemen, this might be it. This is going to be it. So it's a win here for the visiting Seahawks. Unfortunately, the Cowboys do not have what it takes to advance to the Super Bowl. And we lose to the Seahawks 45 to 14. That's just shocking. Really? Well, that's just an unfortunate end to this rebuild. You know, you look at our roster and it's insane. We've got a ton of studs. Uh, at every single position really and even Sp Shane Spitzer's up to an 87 overall so I really don't know what the issue was I don't know if it's you know how Madden is with the playbooks I don't know if the Cowboys playbook just sucks but this was unfortunate also this is the most Cowboys-esque rebuild there is because we were fantastic every single season in the regular season we had all of the yearly stats and awards and we only won I think what three playoff games in the entire rebuild over five seasons so that's about as cowboys as it can get unfortunately anyways y'all let me know who you want to see me rebuild next um hopefully i can actually win something because the cowboys i think we're just cursed i don't know anyways if y'all like the video make sure you give it a thumbs up if you want to see more madden or college football content make sure you subscribe and i'll see y'all in the next one see ya